Hallelujah. That's what the word tells us, right? Those who are baptized, filled with the Holy Spirit, will speak in new tongues and cast out devils. Why? Because they're a hindrance. They cause problems in people's lives. Glory. Would you turn to the book of Ezekiel 36? Ezekiel 36. God says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. That means knowledge of the word of God, knowledge of the spiritual battle, knowledge, not understanding these things. Satan's greatest weapon is deception and his power is fear. So he keeps everybody in a state of deception if he can keep them there. He keeps them bound by religion so a person can't have relationship. But Jesus came to set the captives free. Freedom. Freedom from sickness. Freedom from disease. Freedom. Freedom from addiction. Freedom from voices. Freedom from torment, emotional torment. That's the worst torment you could have is emotional torment. But I'm telling you, God can free us from everything. There's a price. It's called cooperate. If you're not willing to cooperate, you don't get it. The water fountain doesn't come to you. Amen? Amen? The water fountain is there. There's something you got to do. You got to walk up to it. Then you got to do something else. You got to press the button if you want to drink. It's the same thing in the spirit realm. God is saying, when you do this, I'll do that. Oh, Lord, do this. He's saying, wait a minute. I have a spiritual law. It's called sowing and reaping. When you sow into the spirit, you'll reap life. When you sow into the flesh, you will reap corruption. Amen? Ezekiel 36, everybody there? In verse 22, Therefore says, say to the house of Israel, you can speak it with me, thus is the Lord God, I do not do this for your sake, O house of Israel, but for my holy name's sake, which you have profaned among the nations wherever you went. How many of y'all know we profaned the name of the Lord until we got saved? Although there's still something still profaning his name. Hello? And he says in verse 23, And I will sanctify my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, which you have profaned in their midst. And the nations shall know that I am the Lord says the Lord God, when I am hallowed in you before their eyes, in other words, and I am reverenced in you. See, the fear of the Lord is reverence, honor, and respect. It's not a torment fear, although if you ain't walking with God rightly, I would definitely, there would be a torment of fear. Amen? But in this, there's a reverence. It's reverence, honor, and respect. And that can only be established when there's a connection to the Holy Spirit. He's the one that connects everything. That's why Jesus left the Holy Spirit. In verse 24, he said, For I'll take you from among the nations, gather you out of all countries, and bring you into your own land. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean, and I will cleanse you from your, all your filthiness and from all of your idols. You know who can be your worst idol? You. It's a me, myself, and I syndrome. Anything that is in between... You and God is an idol. That's why he says, listen, if you want to be my disciples, you better hate your mother, your sister, your brother, your family, your kids, and everything else. It doesn't mean literal hate. It means you can't allow anything to come between you and him. He's number one. He is your source of everything. Everything is a resource. In verse 26, he says, when this happens, when I cleanse you, then I'm going to give you a new heart. Well, your heart is the character of your spirit. And I will put a what? I'm going to give you a new heart and put a what? New spirit within you. And I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. And I'll put my spirit, that's the Holy Spirit, within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. Why? Because the Holy Spirit will convict. 
He'll guide. He'll guide us to all truth if there is true relationship with him. And I'm going to cause you to walk. I'm going to cause you to be obedient. And you will keep my judgments and you're going to do them. In other words, you're going to be obedient if there is true relationship in the Holy Spirit. But that means you've got to get filled and baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then you shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers, and you shall be my people, and I'll be your God. I will deliver you from all of your uncleanness, and I will call for the grain and multiply it and bring no famine upon you. And I will multiply the fruit of your trees and increase of your fields so that you need never again breach the reproach of famine among the nations. Then you will remember your evil ways and your deeds that were not good. And you will loaf yourselves into your own sight for your iniquities and your abominations. Not for your sake do I do this, says the Lord God. Let it be known to you, but be ashamed and confounded for your own ways, O house of Israel. Thus says the Lord God, on the day that I cleanse you from all of your iniquities, I will also enable you to dwell in the cities and ruins which shall be rebuilt. The desolate land shall be tilled inside of lying desolate in the sight of all who pass by. So they will say, this land that was desolate has become like the Garden of Eden. He's talking about you now as the Garden of Eden. See, we are the land. And it was wasted, desolate, and ruined, and cities are now fortified and inhabited. In other words, there's things that are ha happening with you. You are now bearing more fruit. Thus says the Lord God, I will also let the house of Israel inquire of me to do this for them, and I will increase their men like a flock. In other words, to be hollowed is to be, he refines us, doesn't he? He puts us on what we call the potter's wheel, <laughs> crushes us a little bit, and then remolds us. Listen, he takes the most wretched, you're looking at the ex-wretched, and he turns us into trophies. For his glory, though, not for ours. Amen? Amen. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. One of the things that to be hallowed, again, is in the, in the area to maintain the fear of the of the Lord. God speaks three-dimensional to me and you if we know how to interpret what he's saying. He speaks past, present, and future, and sometimes he speaks all at once. Because in him there is no time. There's no dimension hold. We are bound by, in the arena of time, in the physical realm, but in the spiritual realm, we are not bound by time or space. That's why it's important that we stay filled with the Spirit of God. Why? Because when God speaks, he can show you the past, present, and future all at one time. If you're hearing. This is a place that we want to be positioned as servants of the Lord, as children and offspring of the Holy Spirit. We want to be positioned in this place. It's an eternal position. That's why the word says that we are blessed every spiritual blessing and seated in heavenly places. It is a position. And in this eternal spiritual position, by cleansing from worldly appetites. I'm going to say that again. You know, Jever, you know, when people usually have a problem, you go to a doctor, what's the first thing they want to ask you? What are you eating? What's your appetite? Do you realize that most sicknesses and diseases are caused by what you eat? Amen? Amen? That's why God sometimes for each and every one requires fasting. Why? Because it helps bring cleansing to the body. And also touches and agree in certain things. You can remove some of these spirits. By cleansing from worldly appetites of lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and pride of life, their sin, transgressions, and iniquities. Why? He says, I got I to gotta cleanse you. That means I got to change the way you think. And to change the way you think, I got to change the way you eat. Is everybody okay? Why? Because he wants to express his divine nature through, through me and you. So to maintain a divine nature, you got to have a divine diet. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 3. 
There's a lot of wannabes, but there's not enough willabies. 2 Corinthians 3. He wants us to express his character. Amen? In the divine nature and everything we do. So we need a divine diet. You can call it divine. You can call it eternal. But we'll stay with divine. 2 Corinthians 3, 4. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. And we have such trust through Christ toward God, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God. In other words, we are totally dependent on him. Who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter kills, but the spirit brings life. So it's a ministry of the spirit, which is actually the reality is a ministry of breath. So it's a ministry of the breath of God. So everything now, there used to be rituals in the Old Testament. They had rituals, the sacrificing of animals, and they had the, with certain offerings of bread and, and all kinds of things, right? Not anymore. Now it's a ministry of your mouth. It's called breath. It is the ministry of the breath of God. The letter kills and the spirit gives life. Christ is a representation of the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty in a body. He is called the, the Christ. God the Christ. He, they gave him a name called Jesus. The Christ is the eternal presence and power and truth of God Almighty who came into the world. In other words, he's dead. He put on a worldly form and came in. That's why when he went everywhere, he said, if you see me, you see the Father. Amen? And he said, I'm the only way home. But a third of his ministry was casting out devils, a third of his ministry was healing, and a third of his ministry was preaching. And in this, the Christ, the eternal presence and power and truth of God Almighty, came into the physical realm, put on a body. And when he was broke and died for me and you, he released his spirit, the anointing, the power, the truth for each and every one of us. And in this, now it is the ministry of the spirit, which is the ministry of the power of God. In the Old Testament, they used to have to do all kinds of the rituals and where now we speak it. We speak it. Because what you speak is what you eat. What you eat is what you become. That's why we need to change our diet. If we want to have a divine nature manifest in us, we need to start speaking more the things of God, align ourselves with the Word of God and everything we do. Because this is his voice written, then there's another voice that speaks to us. Is everybody okay? Again, he said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. The only way that you're going to overcome the attacks in, of the unseen realm, which most of the attacks are unseen, and then they manifest in the physical realm, is to have the power of God in this realm. Without the power of God, you can't do nothing. In Acts 1. Acts chapter 1. That's why we don't go around the room and say, Hi, my name is such and such and I'm an addict. Well, you just cursed yourself. You're not an addict. You're a new creation in Christ. Now the doctor may tell you you're sick, but you don't have to accept it. I may have a broken leg. Amen? That might be according to the physical. I may have a broken leg. But I'm going to go turn from physical to spiritual and say, I got to go by what God says. I understand what you say there, Doc. But I got something better. I got the 
one that created the dock. Amen? If I'm going to submit to the one that created the dock, what am I worried about? So now i got to find out what it is he, God wants me to do to cooperate to either be healed or be free. So we want to turn our focus from worldly influence to eternal influence. And that has to be done also by a change of diet. Start eating eternal food. Acts 1, verse 1. The former account I made of Ophelus, of all that Jesus began to both do and to teach. Now, this is a letter that was written by Luke to a friend of his who was an attorney called Theophilus. And he was going to record all the acts of the apostles and the things that Jesus did. That's why it's called the book of Acts. And verse 2, it says, And until the day in which he was taken up, after he threw the Holy Spirit, everyone say Holy Spirit, Holy. had given commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs, being seen by them during 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. So Jesus rose and hung out for 40 days. But first he brought his blood home and then came back. And they were assembled together. Now Jesus appeared to many during his 40 days. And verse 4, and it says, being assembled together with them, he commanded them. He, he did what? He commanded. So when God asks you to do something, it's not a if you would please or your choice. When he says something, every word of the Lord is command. See, this is where people take what God says nonchalantly. What he says goes forth and doesn't return. Void. Amen? It goes forth. And so in this, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water as a symbolic. Every, you know, I don't know if people know, but many times, uh, water baptism is symbolic. Not that God can't do something. Amen. But it's symbolic. It's a representation of being washed by the blood when you repented for your sins. But there's another baptism. And he said, For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. But he commanded them to wait to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Why? Because they needed the power of God. Verse 6, Therefore when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, Will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? And he said to him, it's not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. Verse 8, read it. But you shall receive power. Everyone say power. power. When the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in Judea, Samaria, and to the end of the earth. How can you be a witness without power? It's impossible. Power to overcome thoughts. Power to overcome voices. Power to overcome fear. Power to overcome sickness. Power to overcome oppression. Power to overcome lies of the devil. Power to overcome anything that comes against you. you got to have the power of the Holy Spirit. So you must be filled and baptized with the Holy Spirit. And when that happens, remember, Holy Spirit means holy breath. Spirit means breath. Amen? It is the ministry of breath. It is the ministry of the Spirit. So when God baptizes you with the Holy Spirit, you carry the breath of God. Yes. Now, when you put that together with the Word of God, and you speak it, it becomes a sword of the Spirit. But without the presence of God, it becomes a seed. Is everybody okay? So when we get baptized in the Holy Spirit, we get tongues. Because one of the things He changes is your language. Why? Because it is the ministry of the Spirit. So we're to be speaking the things. Now, when you speak in tongues, you speak directly to God. Your mind doesn't understand what you're saying because the devil knows what you think. It's the only language he can't interpret. And you're praying God's perfect will. You know, one of the hardest things believers have is what to pray. Sometimes they go back to the rosary, you know, I'm like, what? Or they do the Our Father prayer. They just throw something. 
Oh, Lord, I need a Mercedes today. You know, whatever. They don't know how to pray because without the Holy Spirit, they don't know how to pray in the Spirit. Amen? And you're praying the perfect will, and you're stirring yourself up in faith. So he said, I command you, so it's required to be baptized in the Holy Spirit as an offspring of God Almighty. Or you become religious. You don't have the faith you need to get things done. He requires it. Everybody should be speaking that prayer. Lord, baptize me in the Holy Spirit and don't do anything else until he does. Remember, he invited 500 to come and get filled with the Holy Spirit. 120 showed up. All the rest of them started denominations. <laughs> Hallelujah. In this area, when you get baptized in the Holy Spirit, let me tell you something. You get a new identity. You know who you are. Nobody has to tell you who you are. You don't have to read about it. You know. You know that you're a child of the Most High God. Think about it. I mean, we are God's children. He created everything that we know, everything that we see, and everything we don't see, and everything we don't know. And he sends and assigns 2,000 angels minimum for each and every one of us, and one of those angels can kill 185,000 people. So what's the problem? The problem is, is people don't know it. Because the devil will do everything he can to prevent you from knowing who you are. The first thing he comes and steals is your identity. If he can steal your identity, he can steal the promises of God and everything. Remember, he came to steal, kill, and destroy. Uh, Proverbs 18. Everybody okay? Must be. Nobody ran out yet. Hallelujah. How many of y'all want the truth? Amen. Amen. We want truth. We don't need any more fables and false hopes. We want truth that makes us free. But you got to practice it to get free. Because the price is cooperation. Proverbs 18. Oh, happy days. <laughs> Proverbs 18, verse 21. Aren't you glad you're not religious? Yeah. In verse 21, what does it say? Death and life are in the power, which means breath of the what? The tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruit. So what you speak is what you eat. I think we should go maybe a little further on this one. Now we better not. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. What you speak is what you eat. And what you eat is what you become. So we need to change our diet. Amen? That's all that's to it. Freedom comes with cooperation by changing your diet. Matthew 4. Matthew 4. In verse 3. I guess we'll start at verse 1 so you get the full scope of this. Is everybody there? Matthew 4, verse 1, Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit. Isn't that beautiful? The word says those who are led by the Spirit are sons and daughters of God. So he was led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Now I want you to know that God does not lead you to be tempted. Amen? Jesus was led to be tempted to overcome something. He was going face to face with the devil for me and you. Once he kicked his butt, he was going to transfer authority to me and you. All right, cool. 
And when he had fasted 40 days, hello, did he change his diet? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 40 days and 40 nights. Afterward, he was hungry. Now when the tempter had come to him, he said to him, if you are the son of God, was he trying to manipulate his identity? Remember, the first thing the devil tries to steal is who you are. And if you don't keep it activated in feeding yourself with the word of God, getting in God's presence, worshiping, you will lose it. Everything must maintain activated. Faith is constantly activated. Hallelujah. Okay, so when the tempter had come, if you are the son of God, command that these stones become bread. Well, what was he tempting with? Come on, the dude didn't eat for 40 days, right? Jesus didn't eat for 40 days. What's the devil going to come and tempt with? We're your weakest dad. Amen? And he said to him, come on, you're God. Why don't you just make some bread? Turn these stones into bread, if you are God. But Jesus answered and said to him, it is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds or spoken out of the mouth of God. Now, if Jesus had to do that to come against the devil, don't you think me and you do? Oh, hallelujah. The Bible is the recorded words of God. Even in the testimonies, in the epistles, everything's about, even in the Acts, it's all associated with what God did in his words. Jesus declares the diet change to maintain a spiritual position. That is to maintain a place where you can overcome. But we must have the discernment to not drink or eat junk food, spiritual junk food. You know, many people don't realize that sometimes there's, there's a parallel. What you're eating physically is sometimes you're eating spiritually. What's your appetite? What's your desire? Matthew 15. Hallelujah. No, we'll have some Twinkies and donuts after service today. No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> Hallelujah. Matthew 15. In verse 1, then the scribes and Pharisees who were from Jerusalem came to Jesus saying, Why do your disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they do not wash their hands when they eat bread. And Jesus said to them, Why do you also transgress the commandment of God because of your traditions? I love it. I mean, Jesus was, didn't take no garbage, you know what I'm saying? So many people think that to be a Christian, you're supposed to be a wimp. No, you better be bold as heck. Stand for what is right. Verse 4. For God commanded, saying, Honor your father and your mother, and he who curses father and mother, let him be put to death. But you say, whoever says to his father or mother, whatever the prophet, whatever prophet you might have received from me is a gift of God. So they were twisting it, weren't they? Then he need not honor his father or mother. Thus you have made the commandment of God of no effect by your traditions. Then he calls them hypocrites. I love this stuff, man. You hypocrite, he said. Well did Isaiah prophesy about you. These people draw near to me with their mouth. And honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. And in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines of commandments of men. When he had called the multitude to himself, he said to them, Hear and understand what's going on. Not what goes into the mouth defiles a man, but what comes out of the mouth, this is what defiles the man. You know, the enemy really doesn't have access to your spirit. The only way he can get access to your spirit is what you speak out of your mouth. That will bring access 
to your spirit. That's what contaminates us. Is everybody okay? So what we speak is what we eat. Amen? And what we speak can defile us. That's why the word speak tells us about a perverse mouth and so forth. It defiles it. What it does is opens the door to demonic activity. That's why so many people are still in a 12-step program. Because they've been bound there. Hi, I'm an addict. They're going to say that to the day they die. Unless they come out. And there's nothing wrong with starting the 12-step program. Amen? That's, that's a start. I started off going to a meeting because I said, man, I need help. But then one day the Lord spoke to me and said, get out of there. What, what kind of spiritual growth do you think you'll get here? And I said, none. He said, get out. Then every once in a while I go back and torment the chair guy. Anyway. <laughs> Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. You kidding me? They didn't like it when I told them that the guy that started the 12-step program had a visitation from Jesus Christ in the hospital and he got healed by him. <laughs> the chair people don't like to hear that, man. And they don't talk about, now they don't talk about justice and righteousness and sin. It's about being clean. So a lot of people are going to hell clean. But they're not clean from sin. They're just not boozed up or drugged up. And they're waking up in hell going, Lord, look at all the medallions I got here. What's the matter? He said, you ain't got enough. <laughs> Hallelujah. First Corinthians 10, is everybody there? Is that where I said to go? Thank you. See, church isn't supposed to be boring. It's supposed to be fun. Amen. And verse 1, we're going to start there. 1 Corinthians 10, verse 1. Let's speak it together. Moreover, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware that all our fathers were under the cloud and passed through the sea. All were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. All ate the same spiritual food. Wow. All drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. But with most of them, God was not well pleased, for their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. Now these things became our example to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. And do not become idolaters, as were some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Nor let us commit sexual immorality, as some of them did. And in one day, 23,000 fell. Nor let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted, and were destroyed by serpents. Nor complain as some of them also complained, and were destroyed by the destroyer. Now all these happened to them as in examples, and they were written for our admonishment, upon whom the ends of the ages have come. Therefore, let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he falls. Now no temptation has overtaken you except such as common to man. But God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Now, therefore, my beloved, flee from idolatry. Sometimes there's an overbearingness. It's because God didn't bring it. We bring it on ourselves. Do you realize all of our afflictions are brought on ourselves? The word says, when I went astray, I was afflicted. When I went astray, I was afflicted. When I went astray, I was, what did I go astray of? Following the word of God. I was afflicted. I was afflicted with sickness. I was afflicted with fear. I was afflicted with this. I was afflicted with that. See, 
in this affliction, things are also handed down ancestral lines. You are what you've inherited until it is broken off. But that must be broken off by your mouth so that your children don't receive all that you've gotten. Then you can break it off of you. See, because curses regenerate every three generations. They come back every three generations. So they must be broke. That's why we're called the first among many that are born. So that others can be rescued. Is everybody okay? So we want the spiritual food, the spiritual drink. We are to drink from the river of life through our worship. That's what causes a drink to come. Worship. Worship. Now, when you're singing in the words, are you sowing in the spirit? Yes. Then you reap what? Life. But the enemy doesn't want you to sow. If he can prevent you from speaking the word, sowing in the spirit, he's got you bound. See, God doesn't move until you sow. Other than that, we tie the hands of God. Is everybody okay? Go to 2 Peter chapter 1. Second Pete one. In verse two. Let's speak it together. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the what? Knowledge, knowledge of God. Where's the knowledge of God? It's in the Bible. Amen. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may be what? Partakers of the divine nature. Wait a minute. You got to be a partaker of the divine diet then. Because he said the knowledge of God is in the word. That is the divine food. This is called food. It's also called flesh. That's why Jesus said, he who eats of my flesh and drinks of my blood has eternal life. The, his flesh is the word of God. His blood is the spirit. So in this he says that we would be partakers of, of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Now this is so powerful. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith, virtue, to virtue, knowledge, to knowledge, self-control, to self-control, perseverance, to perseverance, godliness, to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. For these things are yours and abound you will neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things, he who does not know the promise of God, he who does not know the word of God, is short-sighted and even to blindness. And he has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you'll never stumble. And so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Powerful. So the only way to partake of the eternal divine nature is to partake of the divine diet. Amen? That's the only way. Where we express his character. In John chapter 4. John chapter 4. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? In verse 1. Therefore the Lord knew that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John. Though Jesus himself did not baptize, but his disciples did. 
he left Judah and departed again to Galilee. But he needed to go through Samaria. So he came to a city of Samaria where it is called Sakar, near a plot of the ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being weary from his journey, sat thus by the well. It was about the sixth hour, and a woman of Samaria came to draw water. And Jesus said to her, Give me a drink, please. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Then the woman of Samaria said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. And Jesus answered, but Jesus wasn't about traditions of men, was he? And Jesus answered and said to her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is who says you give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. And the woman said to him, sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where then do you get this living water are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us the well and drank from it himself as well as his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered and said to her, Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into an everlasting life. And a woman said to him, Sir, give me this water that I may not thirst nor come here to draw. And Jesus said to her, go, call your husband and come here. I love this part. Man, does he know her laundry. And the woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, you have well said, I have no husband. <laughs> For you, now Jesus is really going deep. He said, not only do you not have a husband, but you have had five husbands. And the one whom you are shacking up with right now is not even your husband. In that you spoke truly. And the woman said, sir, I perceive you're a prophet. <laughs> yeah, he read her dirty laundry. The reason why he was expressing this is because he wanted her to come to repentance so that she could partake of the living water. And then and, and, and said, um, our and the woman said to him, Sir, I perceive you're a prophet. In verse 20, Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, and you Jews say that in Jerusalem is a place where one ought to worship. And Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is, not, is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour is coming, and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father is seeking such to worship him. Man, you want the Father to look for you? Worship. That's how people get healed. That's how they get freed. Why, the Father? Let me tell you, one touch from Dad, it's over with. Whatever is in you is gone. It says here in verse 24, For God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. I love it. Why? Because what he was saying, listen, you need to repent. You need to, if you hold any grudges, it's no good. If you have unforgiveness, it's no good. If you have bitterness, that's no good. It's going to prevent me from touching you. Whatever it is that is preventing it needs to be put under the blood. That's where you repent and you turn from it. You forgive. It doesn't matter what anyone's done to you. I don't care if they owe you money. I don't care if they stole from you. I don't care if they called you all kinds of names. I don't care if they've accused you. And I don't care if they're right. Amen. It doesn't matter. You forgive, you bless, you walk away. Why? Because you're concerned about your relationship with him. And not only that, you're freeing them to get a visitation from the Lord. So it doesn't matter. I mean, all of us could go back in our life and accuse of all these people what they've done to us. Forget it. It doesn't matter. You are supposed to be a new creation where old things have passed away, all things have become new. Let them go. Let it go. Lord, I forgive. I got to say it every day. Lord, I forgive everyone that has persecuted and used me, spoke against me, and didn't live up to my expectations. I forgive them and I bless them. 
Why? Because I want to maintain a closeness to the Lord. Remember, the blood is the only way that the Lord has access to you. If the blood ain't there, he ain't coming. The blood always goes before the Spirit. That's why Jesus died on the cross, to shed the blood. Then the Spirit was released. Amen? So we draw strength from God's presence. That's why I don't go to dead churches. If they ain't worshiping God like crazy, I ain't going. I would love the presence of God. Amen? Because you go to a dead church, you leave dead. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? Proverbs 23. Are you willing to do whatever it takes? What is the price? Cooperation. See, if you really look at the word cooperation, it's like a surgery. Cooperation. <laughs> God's going to do surgery on you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Proverbs 23, starting at verse 1. A couple more scriptures. Press in. It says, when you sit down to eat with a ruler, consider carefully what you, he puts before you. And put a knife to your throat if you are a man given to appetite. Nor do not desire his what? Delicacies. What does he call them? For they are deceptive food. And that's what the enemy comes through all Main Street media. Deceptive food. People, are, people have no idea what is getting ready to happen. They are deceived. The Main Street media is nothing but an extension of Satan's arm with deception, lies. And people are eating it. And they're coming, and they're getting caught up right into it. And they're believing the lies. They've come under mind control. They're not free. And then they promote and they vote for things that God disapproves of. And then when they stand before God, God says, I can't allow you in. Because what you promoted and what you voted for. Because only those that promote justice and righteousness, not murder of innocent children, not same-sex marriage, not perversion, none of that's allowed in the kingdom. But Lord, I just voted for them. What you, because you voted for them, you'd be judged the same way. No one. I, it's amazing to me. I, I mean, and this is not about political arena. It's about what's right and wrong, what's justice and, and unjust, what pleases God, what displeases God. I'm telling you, I don't believe any Democrat's going to enter the kingdom of God, and they better wake up soon. They're going to have real hard trouble when they get before my dad. Depart, you who practice lawlessness. But I did this, I did that. It don't mean stink. Proverbs 23, verse something. <laughs> deceptive foods. We don't want to eat deceptive foods. That's a bad diet. It's called junk food. Amen? Verse 4. Do not overwork to be rich because of your own understanding. Cease. Will you set your eyes on that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away like an eagle toward heaven. Do not eat the bread of a miser, nor desire his delicacies. For he, as he thinks in his heart, so he is. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. The morsel you have eaten, you will vomit up and waste your pleasant words. Why? Because what you eat Amen? What you speak is what you eat. What you eat is what you think. Because as you think, you become. As a man thinks, so he becomes. So what you speak, you eat. What you eat is what you think. What you think is what you become. So one of the things you've got to be careful of, not coming in agreement with the enemy says. See, when you're in a circumstance, every voice from hell wants to come to talk to you and bring confusion and frustration and fear and anxiety, stress. And then people run to the world instead of running to God. They run to the phone instead of the throne. 
because they're not reached that level of faith that can hold them. Does everybody understand that? But God says, if you'll speak my word, speak my word, it'll increase your in faith. See, the more you're in this word, the more you'll change. Because you're speaking it, you're eating it, you're thinking it, and you're becoming it. Amen. Psalm 149. Oh, hallelujah. Psalm 149. Everybody okay? Are you getting this? Are you going to change your diet? <laughs> no more Twinkies for breakfast? No more CNN for breakfast? <laughs> Junk food! <laughs> Psalm 49, 149, thank you, dear. What does it say? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song, and his praise is in the assembly of saints. Are we the assembly of saints? Yes, that's why we're going to praise God. His presence comes and you change. Let Israel rejoice in their maker, and let the children of Zion be joyful in the king. Let them praise his name with a dance. Oh, I love to dance. David danced in his underwear. I ain't going that far, though. <laughs> I at home, I could do that, but not here. <laughs> the closest I got to it was tennis clothes. <laughs> let them praise his name with a dance and let them sing praises to him with a timbrel and harp. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He will beautify the humble with salvation. You know, it takes humility to praise God. Amen. Let the saints be joyful in glory. That's the glory realm. Why? Because praising God will get you to another state of glory in his presence and his power. It says, let them sing aloud on their bed. Well, we ain't in bed no more. So we should be singing like crazy. Amen. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a what? Two-edged sword in their hand. Why? Because the anointing comes by praise. It breaks all yokes. And you become bold. To execute vengeance on the nations and punishments on the peoples. To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. To execute on them the written judgment. This honor have all his saints. Praise the Lord. Wow. Everyone say, I'm called, I'm called. to battle. Yeah. My purpose is destroy Satan's kingdom. My destiny is to infiltrate the world system and rescue those taken captive. That's why you're called. You have a purpose and a destiny. But you got to go through training first. Because you, you, if you go out there and you're not sent, you're going to get eaten up. Amen? 1 Corinthians 11. 1 Corinthians 11. Training for reigning. <clears throat> That's what we're here for. Training for reigning. You came to Sunday morning training session. In God's presence. Verse 27. Training for reigning. Oh, hallelujah. Is everybody there? Let's start a little bit further. Uh, Jesus is talking about communion here. But I'm going to go to 27. He said, therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in a what? 
an unworthy manner. That means if you're still holding bitterness, a grudge, unforgiveness, anything towards anyone, and you take communion, will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let him examine himself and let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. So you got to examine yourself first. Is there anyone you're holding bitterness toward? Anyone you're holding a grudge toward? Anyone that's offended you and hurt you, you got to forgive. Why? Because people become sick and die not knowing this truth. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment on himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep or die. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. Somebody see it. But when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord that we may not be condemned with the world. Vitally important. So many people are taking communion and still holding grudges and stuff, wondering why they're still sick and can't get freed up. You must forgive. Why? Because you want to cut yourself loose from every entanglement of this world. You're no longer a part of this world. You're just coming through here. You're a part of an eternal home, eternal family. You don't belong here. It's like putting a square in a round hole. You don't belong here no more. Amen? So you got to learn the ways and be trained up according to eternal kingdom. That's why the word says, Seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and everything will be added to you. And let's close it, Psalm 37. We're to forgive, move on, and enjoy the new life every day. Psalm 37. Hallelujah. Psalm 37 and verse 1. <clears throat> Let's grow for it. Do not what? Do not fret because of evildoers, nor be envious of workers of iniquity. How many of you all know envious will cause a problem? For they, shall not, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass, and where there is a green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and do what? Feed on his faithfulness. God does not feed us junk food. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Why? Because they'll be his desires. Commit your way to the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light, and your justice as the noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way, because of men who brings wicked schemes to pass. Cease from anger, forsake wrath. Do not fret, it only causes Harm. For evildoers will be cut off, but those who wait on the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. Listen, we are blessed, prosperous, and victorious in the kingdom. But you got to get filled, dressed, and possessed with the Spirit of God. You must align yourself with the Word of God. Renew yourself every day. Make things activated through the Word of God, through praise and worship, listening to Christian music. And when you're driving down the road, make sure you're feeding, you're getting fed. It's like Holy Ghost potato chips. You know? You're listening to the right stuff. Feed your spirit so you can overcome. Stop feeding yourself junk food. Be careful what you read. Be careful what you speak. Be careful what you decree. Be careful what you agree on. Amen? Amen? Be careful. It causes harm to us. Remember, what we speak is what we eat. What we eat is what we think. What we think is what we become. Amen? Come on, we're eternal lights, no longer temporary darkness. We're eternal lights. Amen? Let's begin to act like it and draw from his presence and decree according to his word. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed.
I apply the blood of Jesus and every seed that's been planted here. I ask, Father, in the name of Jesus, that the seeds that were planted would grow and bear fruit and come to remembrance so that we may maintain our identity and who we are in you, in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. amen.